morning everyone i welcome you all in this session as you are aware in previous session we discussed how to find out outliers using interquartile range i have told you several times that uh, the difference between good manager and bad manager is that a good manager always takes right decision at right time and the decision should be based on certain data and once you have data you need to you know uh, represent data in proper format and analyze data after removing outliers because if outliers uh, would be there then uh, you won't be making a right decision once a decision is not right again you will land into difficulty so in previous class we have seen how to find out outliers and uh, the method was uh, we had iqr interquartile range so 1.5 times of iqr so we subtracted 1.5 times iqr from q1 and all those data points which were less than that were outliers similarly q3 plus 1.5 iqr right iqr and all these data points which are above this would be outliers but there is a problem with this method the problem is that it does not take into account all the data points in a data set so many times it doesn't give you a good a set of outliers so a better method is available and i would say the best method is this uh, z score so if we calculate z score uh, we can we can uh, easily find out the outliers now what is z score z score is nothing but uh, how far a particular point is away from mean let's look at this so this is your distribution this is your mean let's say if you want to know this point so how far this point is now that would be calculated by using z score so let's look at z score and what's the formula for z score it is x i minus x bar divided by standard deviation right okay so let's say there are uh, different data points right from 240 to 530 so first of all calculate mean of this so mean is 380 so just uh, add all these data points divided by number of data points so the mean is 380 now xi minus x bar so xi is let's say if the x1 is 240 so 240 minus 380 right it would be minus 140 divided by 113 so it would be approximately 1.23 similarly for all other data points and last one is this so this would be the uh, this is 530 minus 380 this would be 150 divided by 113 so so all those points would be outliers for which z score is beyond plus minus 3 so if any 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 z is let's say minus more than minus 3 right would be outlier uh, when i say more than it means towards negative side right so let's say if z is minus 3.4 so that would be that point would be an outlier let's say for this let's for simplicity if i make this as uh, this is a point for which z is for the, which z is let's say Minus three point seven, so it would have become an outlier in that case. Okay. Similarly, any value for which z is, let's say again, more than three, right? So more than three, and in this case, less than three, right? So all those points would be outliers. So this is the sim, the best method of finding outliers. let's move on to the relationship between two numerical uh, variables uh, wh what is a variable let's say in a class 
uh, you have got 30 students and you have heights of all those 30 students and let us say you have got weights of all those students and you want to find out uh, relationship between height and weight. So, that can be done in two ways. The first one is by finding covariance between those two time series. Time series means uh, or let us let us not do not call uh, let us not call it uh, time series, but let us say two data sets right height data sets and weight data set. So, co covariance covariance is nothing, but it, it is a measure of strength of linear relationship between any two numerical variables or two data sets. So, we will call them x and y. So, now this is how you can calculate simple covariance. So, it is covariance x y is equal to summation of all uh, points uh, i range ranging from 1 to n. So, x i minus x bar y i minus y bar divided by n minus 1. So, keep in mind that uh, covariance always measures strength of relationship. It, it, it does not give you information about cause and effect. For example, let us say you have got height and you have got weight, right. So, if covariance is let us say uh, 3, right. Now, it does not mean that higher the height, higher the weight, no, it is not the not the cause and this not the effect right. So, it is not a not a causal effect, it does not give you any causal effect okay, or cause and effect relationship. Let us look at something more about how to interpret covariance. Now, as I said you have got two, two data sets height and weight right. So, if the value of covariance is more than 0, then we will say that let us call it x and call this as y right. So, x and y tend to move in same direction. So, we will say as height increases weight also increases right. Let us say as height increases weight also increases right. So, that is both of them move in same direction. Let us look at a situation where covariance is less than 0 means some negative value. It means x and y tend to move in opposite direction. So, let us say as height increases weight decreases right. So, that is the interpretation of it. So, there is a kind of negative relationship between these two data sets. The third situation is covariance is 0. It means they are independent x and y uh, are independent it means let us say the let us let us call this as x this is y. So, as as x increases there is no no you know uh, proof that y would also increase or decrease. So, it would be something like this right right. So, this is there is no relationship. Uh, th there is one major flaw as far as covariance is concerned that it is not possible to determine the relative strength of the relationship from size of the covariance. So, let us say covariance is 100 and and in another uh, data sets covariance is 3. Now, we will not say that uh, this is uh, this is uh, high, high correlation high covariance between x and y and this is not high correlation. So, there is no number this the size of the covariance does not tell you that um, the, rela the relationship is, 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 is strrong enough or not right. So, that is a drawback. Let us move on to one more example on covariance. So, you have been given uh, 10 different cities right from Tokyo, London to let us say Rio de, Rio de Janeiro. And we want to find out covariance between price of hamburger and movie tickets. So, what we should do? There is a formula available. You just put uh, these values this x bar is y bar right. Just calculate standard deviation 
is there is no need of even calculating standard deviation. So, you got x i minus x bar y i minus y bar divided by n minus 1 right n is sample size. So, n minus 1 would be 9 right. So, you just calculate covariance and covariance is 6.83. Now, this is how you can calculate x minus x bar into y minus y bar. So, this is 12.66. Okay. So, how, how did we get this 12.66 x minus x bar. So, this x right let us take this is equal to 6 x bar let us take this is equal to 5. So, this is 1 right and y minus y bar let us take this y is 32.66 minus y bar is 20.12. So, this is approximately 12 point uh, let us say uh, 6 right. So, multiply 12.6 and 1. So, you will get 12.66 right this how you can calculate. So, this is summation of all these values. So, this summation divided by n minus 1 which is 9. So, this is 6. So, 6.83 now we cannot tell whether this value is an indicator of strong or weak relationship. So, that is uh, the that is uh, that is uh, the drawback of covariance. So, to avoid this uh, there is one more measure to avoid that that problem there is one more measure it is called coefficient of correlation. It measures relative strength of linear relationship between two numerical variables and this is how you can calculate coefficient of correlation. So, whatever is uh, covariance value available just divide it by standard deviation of both the uh, data sets. Okay. So, this is how you can calculate covariance and first co calculate covariance then calculate standard deviation of x and y divide covariance by standard deviation. So, you will get coefficient of correlation. Now, let us look at some more points related to coefficient of correlation. We always represent coefficient of correlation of population by symbol called rho. right? So, this is symbol for coefficient of correlation for population. So, for a sample coefficient of correlation is concerned it is uh, it is represented by r right so either you have got rho or r there are certain features in this first is that it is it is unit free unit free means let's say you have got hamburger price uh, let's say let's say height height of student in centimeter and weight in kg right so the correlation won't be something like centimeter square kg square something like that. no it won't be like this it's a it's a unitless number it it will always vary between minus 1 to plus 1 so the coefficient the, the correlation will be either negative or positive and it can even be zero as well, as well right Closer to minus 1 means there is strong negative relationship, closer to plus 1 means strong positive relationship and 0 it means there is there is you will say that there is no relationship. Okay. Let us look at couple of uh, graphs wherein you will see relationship. So, let us say there are two variables this is x, x increasing in this direction and y. So, let us say when this is x is equal to 1, this y x is equal to 2, this y x is equal to 3. So, when you increase x, y value decreases, right. So, this is r is equal to minus 1, it means there is negative correlation between x and y. With the increase in x, y decreases, right. So, you can have several such situations. Let us say uh, x is expenditure and y is saving. saving right so as you increase expenditure savings will decrease right so that is an example so let's look at this one r values minus 0.6 so again there is a negative relationship but it's not strong as strong as 
minus 1 okay so you can see that this is a loose relationship while it was very tight relationship right so the the variation here is much much less compared to variation over here okay let's look at r is equal to perfectly 1 right exactly equal to 1 so as you increase x y also increases right so let, let's put the same example here now let's call this as uh, okay uh, let me put it in this way as you uh, stop exercise over a period of time then your weight will increase right so you can think of situation like this so when you increase x y will also increase uh, let me put, give you uh, another example as sales increases the profit also increases right again one more example where r is equal to plus 3 again there is a positive relationship but not as strong as in this case so again there is lot of variation right isn't it r is equal to 0 so there is no correlation right x and y are independent altogether so let us say this is x x increasing but y is constant right so there is no effect of x on y okay so these are couple of uh, you know uh, uh, graphs wherein i have shown relationship whether it's positive strongly positive negative or strongly negative right so let's uh, take this example we'll find out correlation so uh, there is a class in which uh, you have conducted a test and these are the marks of different students and you have conducted one more test after some time okay so you want to find out is there any correlation between these two so you can solve this question using of course just using formula or you can use excel or minitab or says or strata or whatever software you want to use so you can use excel so just go to tools data analysis correlation right so after selecting correlation select these two series and then find out value of r so just click at this ok button you will get correlation right so this is the value of correlation this is correlation table so we will say that uh, between test score 1 and test score 1 correlation will always be 1 between score 2 and 2 it will always be 1 but between 1 and 2 it would be 0 0.73 so we will we'll say that correlation is 0 0.73 between these two test scores so what, what does it mean how, how would you interpret it interpret it interpretation is is most important because uh, if you take any two data sets and if you find correlation then there will be some value of r but how you are interpreting that value is is important so r is equal to 0 0.733 so we will say that uh, there is a positive correlation and we will say that students who scored high on first test tend to score high on second test as well right so that is the interpretation now let us look at an example wherein uh, we have to calculate both these measures covariance as well as correlation so uh, there are several products uh, which are listed here and we know that let us look at this starbuck coffee blended coffee so it contains this much calorie and this much fat so you have got uh, two two types of data sets calories and fat so we have to find out covariance first and then correlation coefficient of correlation and then the third part is which is valuable in expressing relationship of course we have already said that the uh, coefficient of correlation is is better than 
covariance and what conclusion can you reach about relationship. So, when you solve this particular question you have this answer right. So, covariance is 591.66 now it does not tell you whether it is strong relationship or weak that is a drawback right. Coefficient of correlation 0 0.71. So, we will say that there is a there is we uh, will we'll say let us say uh, it is a moderate kind of relationship right. So, you can have different uh, ranges let us say if r is equal to let us say 0 0.3 or less than 0 0.4 we will say weak relationship if r is equal to let us say between 0 0.4 to 0, 0, 0 let us say 0, 0, 0.9 we will say that is a moderate relationship and if it is more than 0 0.9 we will say strong positive relationship right. So, r is here we will say let us call it moderate relationship. So, which which value which will which of these two is valuable. So, we have seen we will say that it is coefficient of correlation conclusion is strong positive relationship right. So, in fact, there is no you know fixed uh, range in which you will say that this is strongly positive this is moderate, but generally it is said that if it is let us say more than 0 0.9 or uh, some some time you will say that more than 0 0.8 or more than 0 0.7 are strong positive relationship. Now, there are certain pitfalls in numerical descriptive measures we have seen several numerical descriptive measures. So, what are those pitfalls? Data analysis is always objective whenever we calculate either mean, more, median, variance, standard deviation or any other statistics or parameter, then the data analysis is always an objective process, but the, the interpretation is always subjective. It depends on person to person how he is or she is interpreting results. So, let us look at once again data analysis is objective. So, we should report the summary measures that best describe and communicate the important aspect of the data set right. It should uh, the the whenever you interpret any any finding uh, let us say any mean or let us say standard deviation it should be done in a fair and neutral manner and clear manner. You see once you have got uh, results then you you should be fair fair in analyzing results there should not be any biasness ok. So, these are two problems in fact, this is the problem this is nothing wrong because it is objective there are some ethical considerations you should uh, always uh, be ethical while reporting your findings in any research. So, you should document both good and bad results. Uh, let, let us say you have forecasted something, let us say the let us say the monsoon in next year would be uh, 110 percent right. Now, people will say that oh, oh it is more than 100 it would be always be good, but you should always report error also let us say let us say error is 25 percent right. Now, if if, if, if it becomes let us say 110 minus 25 it becomes 85 uh, if that is the monsoon then uh, it would not be good right. So, you need to uh, report good and bad results right you should always mention the limitations of the research uh, limitations in terms of it is a scope of the research or scope of data collection is not it. Uh, you should always be you, uh, the the measures should always be presented in terms of fairness and objectivity should be there and neutral uh, neutrality should be maintained right. Should not use inappropriate summary measures to distort facts. Uh, when I say summary measure let us say if you are finding uh, descriptive data about a uh, data set then try to give 
all 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 data points sorry all all the outputs namely mean mode median skewness kurtosis standard deviation and so on right okay so with this let me move on to next topic which is on probability so this is something which you would have studied earlier as well but in this class we will see more and more of application of probability. So, let us look at some of the concepts related to probability. So, what is probability? Probability is nothing but the chances of happening of an event. So, whether, whether it will rain or not, whether uh, the GDP would be more than 10 or not. So, all, all these are different possible events which may or which may not happen, right. So, the chance that an uncertain event will occur and it probability is always between 0 and 1, it cannot be less than 0 and it cannot be more than 1, right. Event is, is basically outcome of an experiment. So, let us say uh, if you are tossing a coin, then you will get heads and tails. So, head is an event, getting tail is an event, right. And when you toss a coin, this the process of tossing a coin is nothing but experiment. Uh, Let us say when you throw a, a die, now what are the possible events? Uh, either you can get uh, output as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or 6, right. Okay. So, those are events. Impossible events, now those events for which probability is 0, right. Let us say uh, as you, you know that the uh, every day uh, sun appears to be rising from east, right. Uh, in fact, sun does not rise, it appears that it is it is rising, right, but sun is stationary, but earth is rotating, right. So, so you can you have a situation where uh, it appears that sun is, is, is rising from west, right. So, probability is 0, cannot can never happen, right. Certain events, events which for which probability is equal to 1. So, you, you can always have uh, some events for which probability is 1, right. Uh, so, let us say probability of death is 1, right. Everyone has to die some or the other day. Experiment I have already said, the activity that produces outcomes, right, is not it. So, that is an experiment, right. Let us look at uh, some more probability concepts. There is something called sample space. Sample space is collection of all possible events. So, if you uh, toss a fair coin, then you will get heads and tails. So, this is your sample space, right. These are all six faces of a die, right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right, are all 52 cards of a bridge deck. So, you can have 52 possible events, right. So, this is sample space. Now, uh, there are again some more concepts, simple event, uh, an event described by single characteristics. So, let us take this example, a red card from a deck of cards, right. So, that would be just a simple event. Uh, let us say probability of heads when you throw a uh, fair coin, right. So, that would be just a simple event. Joint event, an event described by two or more characteristics, right here just one characteristics. So, an S that is also read from a deck of cards, right. So, when you pick a card from a deck of cards, if, if it is an S, then it is possible that it, it it might be, uh, it is also red, right. So, you can have both S as well as red, right. So, there are two characteristics. Complement of an event, of course, if there is an event, then just opposite of it is complement of that particular event. So, let us say if, uh, uh, if the event is head, then you cannot have the, the complement would be 
tell right. So, if A is this A dash is tells right. So, heads and tells. Now, there are certain mutually exclusive events. It means if one event is happen, happening, the other event will not happen right. So, events that cannot occur, occur simultaneously right. So, let us say if you are getting heads, then there would not be tails right. Uh, let us say when you throw a die, uh, the, the, the face is let us say 2 right. Now, you cannot have any other face right. Uh, let us say you cannot have 1, 3, 4, 5 and 6 right. So, they are mutually exclusive events. If one event happens, the others will not happen right. So, let us say drawing one card from a deck of cards. So, A is queen of diamonds, queen of clubs. So, events A and B are mutually exclusive, right. So, this is mutually exclusive events. Now, you, you also have collectively exhaustive events. Collectively exhaustive events are uh, one of the events must occur. So, if you like again take an example of throwing of a fair coin. So, what are the uh, events possible either heads or tails right. So, either head will happen or tails will happen right. So, the set of events cover the entire sample space is not it. So, let us say in case of a, de of a deck of cards um, what is the what was the sample space 52 in case of uh, throwing of a die sample space was 6 in case of throwing a coin it was 2 right. So, A is let us say SS, B black cards, C diamonds, D hearts right. So, events A, B, C, D are collectively exhaustive, but not mutually exclusive. Why? Because an S may also be of heart right. So, we will say that B, C, D are collectively exhaustive and also mutually exclusive right. So, this is the difference between mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive events. Let us look at this example. If I ask you to, to give a collectively exhausting list of the possible outcomes of two dice, we have to find out collectively exhaustive list of the possible outcomes of two dice. Before going on to the solution to this question, let me summarize what we have done today. We have seen how to find out outliers using z score. We have seen the numerical measures of finding relationship between two data sets namely covariance and coefficient of correlation and we have seen some basics of probability. So, in next class we will have some more topics on probability for the time being let me finish over here. Thank you very much.